Not only did we lose the Club World Cup to PSG thanks to an Alvaro Morata goal, but uh, well, he also has now joined Everton, just to add insult to injury. Hello and welcome back to more Careering Onwards with me, Mr. Grand 2, or indeed welcome to the first episode you're watching, if indeed that is the case. So we are here at the start of Season 7 of The Save and our first season in charge of Liverpool. We've come a long way in the save, starting out at Cambridge United, uh, going to Leicester City, and then most recently Borussia Mönchengladbach, who was a bit of a bit of a shame to leave after one season. But when an opportunity like this comes along, you just have to take it in a save like this. So this is the first proper episode. The first game of the season will be against Fulham as we mark our return to English football and our return to the Premier League. And uh, well, I mean, it's, we've got a good chance of actually winning it. This is this is a big step up, a big club, one of the top six clubs in the Premier League, and uh, well, definitely a big opportunity for us to prove ourselves and to win win some more trophies and just continue to build our reputation and have a really successful time of things. Now we'll go through the uh, go through the transfers in a minute, but one of the things that I'm quite excited about regarding Liverpool obviously in real life they're about to win the Premier League they probably have already won the Premier League or almost certainly have already won the Premier League by the time this video goes up unless some sort of horrific thing happens involving the coronavirus which hopefully will also have disappeared by the time this episode goes up um, but uh, the thing is um, Liverpool obviously real life they're incredibly good and in most people's FM saves including most of my other FM saves this year including Chelsea Challenge they're an unstoppable football machine but in this save well that's not what's happened they haven't in any of the six years we've been doing this won the Premier League yet yeah, they have finished second a couple of times and they have been in the Champions League spaces every single season, um, so you know they're, they're pretty consistent. They're, they're 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 not in any danger. They haven't had it, they haven't struggled at any point, but they still have not found that breakthrough. They still haven't won the Premier League, and well, yeah, they still have not won the Premier League. It's as simple as that. They have not won England's top flight since 1990, back before the rebranding. And it's our responsibility to win the competition that in this universe they still have yet to win. Now they have won the FA Cup a couple of times in the save and they've won the Carabao Cup as well, uh, the Community Shield a few times too. But it's the Premier League we want to win. We want to, want to win those as well. We want to win the Champions League again as well. They haven't won it since 2019 as in real life. They lost in the final in 2024. So it's going to be interesting. Now I just want to briefly touch on our former employers, Borussia Mönchengladbach. They have hired Jorge Sampaoli as uh, their manager. We'll inevitably draw them in the Champions League group stage, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. But I um, mean, obviously it was disappointing that we didn't win anything there in our single season. Um, and you know, maybe we'll go back, well we'll probably go, we'll almost certainly go back to Germany one day, probably not with Mönchengladbach if we're honest, but it was a, it was a, it was an enjoyable little season, a fun little uh, year abroad for us. And actually I just wanted to mention the fact that by finishing second, not only was that incredibly commendable, um, beating Dortmund, beating Leipzig and only finishing behind Bayern Munich, well actually it was the best league position finish that Borussia Mönchengladbach have had for some 40, I think 47 years if my maths is correct, something like that. So that's not too bad, that's not too bad at all. Um, but Liverpool, well I mean let's, let's have a look at the transfers and then we'll have a look at sort of season preview stuff. The board, their expectation is to qualify for the Champions League. They don't expect us to win the league this season. They want us to get to the semis of the Champions League. And then the final of the FA Cup, which we will certainly try and do, although Cups are more sort of the luck of the draw. Now we're reaching the stage of, of sort of regens becoming more sort of to the fore and, and players who you would uh, haven't heard of because they don't exist or because they're very, very um, in someone's youth team somewhere in Sevilla at this point of time. Uh, but We'll go through the transfers and then we'll look at how the squad is because the squad is actually pretty familiar uh, in the most part. Pretty much everybody you would expect, uh, all of the Liverpool's current big names, with the exception really of someone like Jordan Henderson, are all still there. Uh, but released players of note, uh, Carmen uh, Kelleher, Liverpool's uh, young goalkeeper, he had been third choice, he has gone, and Rian Brewster has also been released. He's joined Fortuna Dusseldorf, looks pretty decent, but he... Well, I, I probably would have kept him if I could, but he wanted to leave and he refused to sign a new contract, so he has gone. 
So in terms of departures, then lots of uh, lots of regens and young players have gone out on loan and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Nikola Vlasic was here. He's gone out on loan to West Ham. They're paying all of his wages. But I'm not really sure why they signed him. He does look okay. They paid 45 million for him from CSKA Moscow. Barely used him. Former Everton player, of course, which is controversial. Um, but yeah, he's not here at the moment. He's gone to West Ham. We have also sold Kiyana Herver, um, one of the players from Liverpool's academy who you know kind of feels that he is on the cusp of maybe breaking into the first team. He's played in a few of the FA Cup games um, for them in real life. Uh, but we've sold him to Aston Villa because we've got a lot of centre backs. He can, I mean, he's he's quite good at right back too. But we've got a lot of young centre backs, which we'll see in a minute. Um, so he's gone to Aston Villa. 17.25 million is quite good for a player who has spent the entire save out on loan all over the place, mostly mostly at Rangers. Um, but he's he's not done massively well, and uh, you know, good luck to him at Aston Villa. And then another player who's kind of falls into the category of I'm not really sure why he was there, a uh, Georgian de Ares Kieta, a uh, Uruguayan um, winger, relative relatively decent. And you know, you might say in a minute when you look at who we've replaced him with, well, why have you done that? But the the, there's, the, the clear reason is he was on 120 grand a week. Um, the person we've replaced him with is on half that, so we got that off the wage bill, and we've sold him to Roma for thirty million pounds. The person we've replaced him with, we got on a free. So, I mean, massive money making exercise for that one. But yeah, he was on loan at Roma last season anyway, um, and they've now bought him for thirty million pounds. He did quite well in them for them in uh, Serie A. So, yeah, good luck to him. Bit of a loss from what they paid for him, but, but it seems like a baffling signing anyway. And the other piece of money made is for Claude Adjapong, Italian right back. Um, I've used him in the save where I manage the Italian national side. He's pretty decent, although he doesn't look great in this one. Work rate of 10 would have been a concern for me, but he had already, that transfer was already arranged before I even came here. 33 million to Porto, where he was on loan last season as well. And just to highlight a few of the youngsters out on loan who we may see feature over the next few years if we stay here, um, then Adam Brun is one of them. He's gone on loan to Parma. We've got a lot of young midfielders as well, a lot of midfielders we didn't really need him. I wanted him to develop. He does look pretty decent. Frenchman, there's, we, well, there's basically the entire French youth team plays for Liverpool and I don't, I don't know why I don't know why the AI in charge of Liverpool has just been signing French youngsters I mean there's a lot of good French youngsters but it, it seems quite weird why they're all, they're all sort of like they've, they've gone to Liverpool like like a magnet so then signings signings signing signings well the, you'll see in a minute the squad is really very good and we're, I've kept basically everybody they're quite old now most of them most of them are in their 30s but they're all still really good so I don't see any reason to replace them we might as well might as well use them while we can and even if they end up leaving for not very much money or on freeze well I'm not, not really bothered it's not like Liverpool are a particularly poor club this player was signed by the computer before I joined Pedro Ildefonso not French this time, he's Portuguese, it looks really quite nice. I'm going to stay here this season, got him on a free from Sporting Lisbon, which is quite nice, or Sporting Club de Portugal. Another player also signed by the computer before I got here, Fabian Gruzo, he's French, this guy's French, um, 3.4 million, 3.5 million, read numbers properly, that'll be good, from uh, from Leon. Um, I, I wouldn't have signed him, he's only 16, which is which is good and he is improving but 10 10 finishing to me is not good for a striker i like my strikers to be good at actually scoring goals so yeah technically not the best but he's going to be in the under 18s i'm not going to use him anytime soon but maybe he'll develop he's got five star potential so who knows right then another uh, youngster for the future this one i did actually sign kai ishigami uh, another midfielder, we've got a lot of midfielders, but he was too good to pass up really, especially for the price, 4.2 million from Kashima, Antlers, work rate's nice, tackling's nice, marking's nice, passing's not great, but it's not awful, he's only 18, uh, Japanese um, youth international at an under 23 level, looks like one very good for the future, five star potential again, he's gone alone to Sporting Lisbon because he hasn't got a work permit, so again he won't become club trained, but I mean, he wouldn't anyway, even if we kept him because of the work permit issue. But yeah, looks like another good one for the future. And so I signed three players for the first team. I, I, you know, looking at the squad, we needed two wingers, a backup winger, a starting winger, and a backup right back. And here 
is the backup winger. It's Son Hyun Min um, on a free transfer from Tottenham. Um, I just think it's it's quite sensible, even if it's only for one season, maybe two seasons. He still looks really good. Technicals really good. Finishing of 16 is lovely. Physically, he's still fine. Like 13 pace, 14 acceleration, still fine. Either footed, he's retired from South Korea duty, so we won't lose him to any sort of Asian Cup or anything like that. Play on both sides, get the job done. Not costing us anything in terms of transfer fee. 65 thousand pounds a week is nothing too bad at all he's happy to be an impact sub just i mean he's just a lovely guy we all love son apart from when he gets sent off but it just yeah but not i don't see any risk in this one at all and then i knew back up right back max Ahrens has joined us um I, I did sign him in the chelsea save and paid 74 million pounds for him and then never used him in in this case that's not what's happened we have only paid 13 million for him from watford he's been there for two years and not really played very much was previously at Spurs we did try and sign him when we were at Leicester um, he didn't play very much for them either um, so he's not really but had a very good successful career since he left Norwich particularly and it's probably not going to change here because he is definitely the backup to Trent Alexander-Arnold who is very much still here and is now entering his absolute prime at the age of I think 26 so yeah, he's probably not going to play particularly, but there's a good solid option, good solid backup. And actually, the backup left back, who was already here before I got here, is Jamal Lewis. So the two Norwich Academy graduate fullbacks are both going to be reunited on the Liverpool bench. And then our final signing is a player who we did encounter last season in the Bundesliga. Our new starting right winger, he's fully natural in that position, which I really like. Um, because Sadio Mane, of all the established big names, Sadio Mane is the the most sort of on the decline. He's still good. He's still more than capable of Premier League football, but he is definitely on the decline. So we needed to replace him, and that is the replacement we have got. Marko Vujovic, who is one of the plethora of wonder kids that Bayern Munich unleashed on the Bundesliga last season to devastating effect. Um, including against us, although we did we we didn't lose to them with Borussia Mönchengladbach. We beat them and got a draw, but they obviously ran away with the league in the end. But this young man is looking like he is already and will continue to be something very, very, very special. Current ability four and a half stars and could still improve to the full five stars. He is physically unbelievable. Twenty agility, nineteen pace. 18 natural fitness as well. Really very nice. Uh, he's already got 17 caps for the German national side. Crossing of 17, dribbling of 17, 16 first touch, 17 determination. I like that. Passing of 16, vision of 15. He's got a lot really. Finishing of 13 could maybe be higher, but there's, like, you can't really complain too much about that. He's on a very hefty wage and a lot of bonuses as well. If we win a competition, he gets £2 million or something ridiculous. But that was all we could... Well, we had to do it to persuade him to leave Bayern Munich. He's cost us £90 million, which actually, as farcical as it may be, is quite good value, I think. We're only paying £65 million up front. Uh, the rest is in instalments. So not too bad. And I think he could be, at the age of 20, he could be a future Ballon d'Or winner. Um, that's how good he is. And I'm, I'm very happy to get him in. So then, with all the transfers said and done, let's have a look at the team. I haven't sorted out the bench yet. We'll sort that out in a second. But uh, this is this is probably the team that is going to start at the beginning of the season. There's a few players that have joined. Um, and then a few of the established names, quite a lot of the established names, are still there. Quick check on the medical centre. Trent Alexander-Arnold got injured in the Club World Cup, but he is back and will be able to play. Joe Gomez is still injured, though. He's going to be out for a couple more weeks. But let's go through the team that is going to be starting in the game tomorrow. It's not today. I should have clicked a bit more. But starting in the game tomorrow against Fulham, assuming we don't have any late injuries. And then we'll, we'll, as we do this, we'll go through the squad as well. So Allison is going to be starting in goal. He's still here and he's still amazing. He's only 32. No need to replace him. We've got Angus Gunn as a pretty solid backup. And then uh, Mohamed Ben Salam, another Frenchman who the computer assigned. Um, he looks quite a good future prospect um, more than capable as a as a third choice goalkeeper i mean i've got to check this is our is our chief scout french is that what's causing this 
No, Dave Fallows, he's, he's, he's English. We don't appear to have... There's a few Frenchmen, this guy. Maybe it's him. Maybe he's recommending all the French players. Anyway, Andy Robertson's still going to be at left-back. He's 31, but again, he still looks amazing. Physically still absolutely fantastic. There's no need to replace him. I know everyone, you know, you see all the memes you see on the FM Reddit, you know, oh, you know, uh, replace a player every time he gets to 28, even if he's a club legend, and replace him with some sort of Uruguayan or Chilean wonder kid. But you don't need to. You don't need to. Right back then, obviously, he's going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yeah, he's 26 years old. He's just still really good. Still really good. No need to replace him. Obviously, as we've said, Jamal Lewis, Max Ahrens, the backups. Now, central defence is interesting. Virgil van Dijk is, is still here. He's 34. I see he's slightly maybe on the way out. Still physically perfectly fine. Pace of 14 is is completely fine as far as I'm concerned. So I see no reason to replace him certainly this season, maybe next season. We'll see how he does this year, but he's still incredible. But alongside him, obviously, Joe Gomez will probably play. Um, obviously, as we said, out injured. We've also got Jose Jimenez, who was signed um, well, quite a long time ago, second season for £65 million from Atletico Madrid. has done pretty well as a solid, solid third-choice option. Still looks quite good. Slower than he once was, um, and it's declined a bit. But it's still pretty good. But he's probably not going to play much this season because we have got three, um, they're French, you could probably guess that, three French young regen centre-backs who all look pretty decent. The one who I'm going to start with uh, alongside Van Dijk in the absence of Joe Gomez is Pierre Foucher, uh, who just looks really nice. 19 positioning, love that one. 16 decisions, love that. He's got everything you want. Tackling of 13 is the only real issue, and passing of 13 maybe as well, but he's only 20. He's left-footed, which I really like. Um, he was signed from Stade René, and he spent last season on at Granada and did pretty well. So he's going to be the person who gets the honour of starting alongside Virgil van Dijk. The other the other two, uh, we've got uh, David Girardot, uh, who is the highest value rated, but is actually the lowest star rating which is interesting, although he doesn't have any cons. He's he's, he's still very, very good. Uh, marking and tackling of only 12, though, slightly concerns me, um, but he's overall pretty fantastic. Was signed from PSG for 37.5 million, so he wasn't cheap. Um, he has, he's has he been here. He, he played last season. He didn't get loaned out, but I'm not sure he's, he's as good as... Uh, as good as Foucher. The other one we encountered last season, Julian Lefebvre, um, who spent last year on loan at Hoffenheim, uh, our, well, one of our, our main rivals for Champions League qualification in the Bundesliga, did really well for them, um, and again, looks pretty good. I'd say he's actually better than Giroud as well. Passing of 11, though, that does concern me a little bit, given how I like my defenders to play. We'll, we'll get, him, get him a bit trained up a little bit more on that one, but all three of these guys still really, really, really good. And the thing is that, I mean, Jimenez will probably leave um, either in January or next summer. But when Van Dyke does go, whether he retires or whether he, he leaves, we we don't really need to sign anyone particularly to replace him. We, You know, these guys can just come in. And it's really good for me as manager of the French national side, having all these youngsters at the club I'm now managing. Anyway, midfield. This is how I'm going to start the midfield. We've got three guys who don't play for Liverpool in real life. We've got Frankie de Jong, who was signed by them for £117 million from Barcelona. He's he's really good, isn't he? 28 years old, in the prime of his life. 28 years old is also Rodrigo Bentoncourt, who also looks really very good. Signed from Borussia Dortmund for £78 million. And then Lucas Paqueta is going to be the Mazala. Also looks really very good. He was signed last summer for £91 million from AC Milan. So they've invested a lot of money in their midfield. That is for sure. And the other player we need to highlight from the midfield is Miguel Salvador, who is... He's nuts. 20 vision. It's insane. I don't know what position to play him in because he can play all three of them. I mean, he's, he's most natural as the deep line playmaker. But I think he's going to be an amazing Mazzala. His finishing isn't great, but everything else is fantastic. He can do box-to-box -box as well, pretty well. 
Um, he cost 53 million from Porto, so he's not cheap. But we've got four excellent, excellent midfielders. And then uh, Naby Keita and Fabinho, both still here as well. And, well, there's Fabinho, still looks really, really good. Naby Keita still looks really, really good as well. So, I mean, midfield were absolutely fine. And then the wings, obviously, we brought in Vujovic. We know how good he is. Mohamed Salah is 33 years old. And, well, there's some slight decline down to down to the horrifying lows of 16, 16 acceleration, 17 balance. He's still incredible. There's no need to replace him. He has... He has, look at his average ratings. He's played basically every game. He's still scoring a horrifyingly large amount of goals, still getting assists. He's, he's averaged over a 7.3 every single season. No need to replace him anytime soon. Now, as I said, we brought Vujovic in because Mane is starting to show quite a lot of decline. Still really good. He's still got pace of 14. We don't need to worry about him particularly. But yeah, he is declining a little bit. Um, which is, you know, he's 33, um, but yes, yeah, still perfectly, perfectly good player to have around the club. Son, obviously, we've already seen. I've also kept Harvey Elliott, who was about to be sold to Huddersfield when I joined. Doesn't look amazing, it's fair to say, but as a solid option on the left-hand side, I think he's a good, he's a good backup to have as well. There are a couple of regen um, wingers or sort of wingers slash strikers who I don't think are amazing, but they're good to have around. Michael Quinn is one of them. He is pretty decent, so quite a lot of nice attributes and massive potential. He's only 19, so one for the future. And Scott Saunders, who is mostly a striker, but I think could also be quite a decent left winger too. He is here as well. And then finally, we're going through the whole squad, but I think it's a good thing to do because because of the sort of time we are at in the save. Striker. Now, we, we've got Moussa Dembele. He's 29 now. Um, obviously, we have him for the French national side. I think still amazing, so no need to replace him. Roberto Firmino is also still here. Um, again, still physically fine, maybe slightly slower than he was at the age of 33, but still really very good. No need to replace him. Uh, as another option as a striker, obviously we've got Saunders, as said, who can also play there too. We didn't mention Tom West, another midfielder, looks pretty pretty decent too. So overall, I think the squad that we've got is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, maybe strike is an issue going forwards because Firmino's quite old, Dembele's getting there. Um, but it's, I mean, it's still, they're still both really good. We'll see how well they perform this season. Um, and we do have a couple of um, regen strikers coming through in the reserves, including this guy, Frederick Jacobson, Danish youth international. Looks really nice as well, doesn't he? So we're in a very good position. We're in a very good position. Financially, loads of money. We've still got 45 million to spend. I'm not going to spend it. Um, I don't think I don't think we need to bring anyone else in um, at the moment. But yeah, it's a really nice position to come into. Um, season preview, obviously the board want us to get into the Champions League and that the expectation from the media is that we're going to finish second, we're 72 on odds, we're not expected to win the league, Man City are really good, they have, they've won the Premier League every single season since, uh, Man, well Man United won it in the first season of the save every year since, five in a row for Man City, they're, yeah they're good, they're pretty good, managed by Marcello Bielsa who has just installed an absolute dynasty, at, uh, at Man City. He replaced Pep, who got sacked after the first season for not winning the league. Um, he then went to Spurs, Spain, and now he's in charge of Inter Milan. But Marcello Bielsa has been there ever since. Five years now, five Premier Leagues in a row. So that's that's going to be going to be difficult to beat. Definitely going to be difficult to beat. But we do have we do have uh, two players in the media dream eleven. We've got De Jong, we've got Vujovic, and then Kieran Tierney is for some reason at right back, which is weird. Um, but obviously he doesn't play for us. He plays for Arsenal. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult to overthrow Manchester City, I think. But we'll give it a good go. Right then, Manchester City got off to winning ways. It was a pretty close game with Everton, but they got all three points. Manchester United have won already as well. We need to get off to winning ways too. At Anfield against Fulham, you would expect us to get the job done. They've been in the Premier League since while well, they got promoted in the first season, finishing second in the Championship, and they have stayed in the Premier League ever since then. Um, and really good finish for them last season, finishing 10th. Scott Parker still in charge, which is really nice to see. 
Right, we've already been through the team. We won't go through it again. Hopefully, we can get all three points here in our opening game of the season. Fulham, they have got well. Nicholson, Colin Nicholson, is he's he's developed very very well since we were last in the Premier League with Leicester. Goodness gracious me! Why well, he didn't he didn't come up in my searches? His passing is not amazing um, because he's more sort of suited. He's more sort of suited for be a striker than a winger. But sixty, oh, he's really good. Just to shortlist him for future reference. And a few of our former players on there, they've got Jaden Bogle, who we had at, at Leicester City. He didn't really play for us there particularly and got quite upset. And they've got Haruki Abe, who we had, of course, last season at Borussia Mönchengladbach as well. But I expect nothing but a win for this one. We, we sh we've, got, we've got to do it. We've got to, we've got to get the job done. If we can't beat Fulham, then, uh, well, we're going to be in all sorts of bother. Right, first highlight of the new campaign, Mohamed Salah running, just brilliant, wow, what a run from him, he's still got it at the age of 33, no need, no need to think about replacing him this season, that's for sure. I mean, he didn't score though, did he, but Vujovic, first touch we've seen from him, back to Trent Alexander-Arnold, um, he's, he's lacking fitness because he, he got injured in the uh, Club World Cup, of course, but he's back for this one, foul chair to Paqueta, Bentacor working it nicely through the midfield, pressing forwards to Jong, Gets it back, and I'll go all the way back to Virgil van Dijk, but he prays it out to uh, Vujovic, who beats his man into Moussa Dembele, who heads home for his third goal of the season because he scored twice in the Club World Cup after the league season reset, which is incredibly confusing. But it's his, it's his first proper goal of the season, his first goal in the league, and I, I'm as far as I'm concerned, his first proper goal of the season. Lovely close finish from him. He's not offside, uh, but yeah, great start to great start to life here. Fulham, though, aren't done yet, although Andy Robertson clears that one really well. Dembele, brilliant tackle on him, but Vujovic gets it straight back. Dembele gets it again into Salah, goes the wrong side of the goalkeeper, really, but it's a good save. Fulham's turn to try and build from the back a bit. Hadji to Arbe uh, cuts inside, and uh, we're trying to get the ball back a little bit. They're doing quite nicely, though. Hadji out to Nicholson. He's a danger man on the right-hand side. Cut, drives in. De Jong can't get him, and Allison makes a save. Oh, the ball's gone forward. Salah is, is is onside. He's kept it in. It was a bit of a weird start to the highlight. Anyway, Robertson has it. Across to Dembele. It's cleared by Bogle. Only as far as Alexander-Arnold and Van Dijk. We go all the way back to Allison, And we look to build something. Loads of space on the left for Andy Robertson to run into. Ball across to Bacato. Is he going to take this on with a shot? Yes, he is. Just wide. Drags his shot just round the post. Well, at half-time, we are definitely in control in terms of the stats. I would be happier... If we were two nil up, or well, or more, at least at least two nil up, the goalkeeper's done pretty well. Uh, Uzo has done well in the Fulham goal. He p plays the goal kick out, and the ball is is a, is a lofty one. It's come back to Bentoncourt, and this there's a lot of space for us to run into today. Vujovic switches it to Alexander Arnold, gets it back, and then gives it back again. Alexander Arnold across Dembele has hit the post. And he's, he's gone and fouled the defender. He's done that slide kick, the slide tackle goal thing. He's tried to do that, but it didn't work, and he got booked. Um, but he's got, it, he's got it back again. And another chance for us here. Paquet is in to Mohamed Salah, and Mohamed Salah opens his account for the season. Again, he scored in the Club World Cup, so it says it's his second, but really it's actually his first proper one. Um, Bentoncourt slips it to Paquet. Loads of room opening up for them, and Mohamed Salah slides in. And, well, he's, he's, he's put us into a, a really commanding lead already. Not over yet, though. That's a poor ball out from Fulham. Vujovic is in. It would be lovely to get a goal today. Not on this occasion, though. All right, I'm going to take Trent off because he's not particularly fit. We'll bring on Max Ahrens for his debut. And Vujovic is a little bit tired. He's got himself an assist on his debut. Not going to get a goal uh, on this occasion, but I'm sure he will at some point. Son Hyun Min on for his debut, too. Bentoncourt finds Son uh, on the right-hand side, puts the ball across. It's a lovely ball from Son. Mohamed Salah is is always well, fouled. I think the referee was trying to play the advantage there. Son is in. Oh, and Son, Son Hyun Min proving what a well, what a brilliant signing. Free transfer, more than worth it. Now I'm not what I don't know what happens. Is Salah just stops, literally stands still, gets it back, and then Son with a flicked header in. That was very weird. Um, but well, we, we're 3 0 up, so I don't really care. But that was a very weird highlight. Is their chance 4 or 4 of Mohamed Salah on the left hand side back to Foucher? Gives it to Rodrigo Bentancourt running through. The, I mean, this 
the Anfield pitch seems very big again. Maybe I'm just zoomed in. Am I am I zoomed in? Maybe I was zoomed in too much. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, Mohamed Salah knocks it down to Pakita into Firmino. Salah gets it back. I mean, that was going wide. The goalkeeper makes a bit of a bit of a showy save to force a corner, which uh, Salah takes and uh, Fulham can maybe break here. Max Meyer running through. He's found Nicholson and well, good chance for Fulham on the break. Wouldn't have really made much of a difference though. Well, there we go then. 3-0. Very effective, very brutal, total domination of the stats, as you would probably expect. There's going to be sterner tests to come, especially when we face Man City, but that's a very nice way to start the season off. Everyone playing really well. Mohamed Salah continuing where he has left off in every other season so far. And there we go then. At this very early stage, with many teams not having even played yet, we are top of the league by virtue of the fact that we won and scored three goals without reply and no one else has done that. But I'll take it. I will take it. So then, next time we will be back for some more league action as well as the Champions League. So it may well be this one um, and then a league game, or it could be this one. I'm likely to look at this one because we've got Chelsea before it and Everton after it. A bit of a Merseyside derby. That would be quite nice to do. But then also, my eye is obviously drawn to the fact that on the 18th of October, we play Manchester City. So Manchester City and a Champions League game seems pretty inevitable given the fact that they have been pretty much unbeatable since the uh, well since since the second season of the safe so we'll see we'll see what the champions league group draw brings but a combination a combination of those is the likely thing we'll come back to next time but that is going to be the end of this episode thank you very much for watching I'll leave a like if you enjoyed it let me know what you think of the transfers in the comments below let me know how you think we're going to do this season and make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss what happens next time can we beat manchester city